In today's video, we're going to explore the uses of radiation in medicine. And specifically, we'll take a look at radiotherapy, which is used to treat cancer, and medical traces, which can help us to detect problems inside the body. We saw in the last video that ionizing radiation can damage our cells by ionizing the atoms and molecules within them. Although this can cause general damage to the cells, the major problem is that it can mutate our DNA, which can occasionally lead to cancer. However, if our cells receive a large enough dose, then they can be killed off completely. This is why if you receive large doses of radiation across your entire body, you get radiation sickness, which can lead to vomiting, tiredness, and hair loss. Basically, loads of your cells have either been destroyed or are badly damaged. So overall, you feel really ill. On the bright side though, doctors can use this radiation to destroy particular cells that we don't want, like cancer cells. So although radiation can cause cancer, it can also treat cancer. We call this process radiotherapy, and there are two main ways that we can deliver the radiation, externally or internally. External sources normally emit gamma rays that are targeted at the cancer site from lots of different angles, so that only the cancer site gets the highest dose. The internal method is where we place the radioactive source inside the body, either inside the cancer itself or next to the cancer. This method usually uses beta radiation, which is more damaging than gamma rays, but can't pass as far through the body. Unfortunately, both of these techniques have side effects, as other healthy cells in the body will also get damaged or killed in the process, which is why cancer therapy often makes patients feel so sick. The other use of radiation that we need to cover are medical traces. If we place certain radioactive isotopes inside a person's body, which we can do by injecting them or getting the person to swallow them, then we can actually track the movement of the isotopes around the person's body by tracking the radiation that they emit. This means that we can check if particular organs are working properly by seeing if they absorb the right amount of the substance. For example, by giving people iodine 1, 2, 3, which emits gamma radiation, we can see if the iodine is being absorbed by the thyroid gland like it should be. Because if it is, then we'll be able to detect the gamma radiation. We tend to use gamma rays for medical traces because they are less harmful than alpha or beta. Although we do sometimes use beta radiation. We also want to use isotopes with as short a half-life as possible, so that they only emit radiation for a short period while we take the measurements, and then they stop being harmful. So as we've seen with radiotherapy and medical traces, radiation can be very useful, but it is also very harmful. So whenever we use radiation, we have to weigh up the risks against the benefits. For example, using medical traces can help us diagnose diseases, so it's generally well worth the risk if we're already suspicious that a person might have the disease. However, we still want to minimize the risk by giving a low dose with a short half-life. When it comes to cancer treatment, radiotherapy can literally save a person's life, so it's generally worth the side effects. Some people still choose not to have radiotherapy though, particularly if it will only extend their life by a short period, rather than treating it completely. Anyway, that's everything for this video, so I hope you found it useful. If you did, then give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.